Hello everyone, don't mind the background, this is just uh, some eye candy for you while I give you kind of like an overview of what I'm trying to do here. So uh, I'm making this video because I'm planning on reviewing more small hand stitched makers and now I, except for Lacau, almost all of the companies I've reviewed so far are are on the larger side. I know there are still small business, except for Traveler's Company, but they are large in the planner um, world. So before I start reviewing the small hand-stitched companies, I wanted to just show you what goes on in one of those makers lives basically. These businesses are usually very different from the bigger ones that I've re reviewed that have actual employees for one and um, I guess like streamlined production and whatnot and I just wanted to show you the behind the scenes and since they're not streamlined production, usually with hand-stitched, smaller maker items, you get a completely different look and feel and vibe um, from the production from one of those uh, bigger companies with more than just one person working on things. And it also gives you different reasons to buy their items in my mind or at least for me. And so um, overall, I wanted to give you an idea of what we're working with and basically show you how a smaller hand-stitched business um, looks and why it's so different from an actual company. So let's get started. Before I show you things, <laughs> I just want to preface everything and just say that I myself a highly disorganized person so throughout this entire process you see how messy I am and I I I know for sure that a lot of the workshops um, that other people have at home are um, <laughs> a lot better <laughs> than this but <laughs> I I mean, it's a leather workshop and it, there's going to be mess somewhere, just not as messy as me. So please bear with me if you have some kind of OCD. I'll do my best to hide some of these, but I also want to give you, like, I didn't clean anything up before I started filming the video. So this is my workbench and you can see all the beautiful mess <laughs> everywhere. It's in my basement, so thankfully um, it's not actually in my house per se. When I open the drawer, I have some of my spare threads, different hardware here, some snaps, rivets, things like that. I have um, different tools here, stamps, this is for cutting straps and I have my spare needles that I keep losing them so at least I have these. Um, I don't know what this is doing here but it's from a chic sparrows that I cut up. These are some of the different punching tools and you know all and different setting tools. I have like three different kinds of snaps and all of them require different tools to set and when you close this the surface looks absolutely horrendous um but this is what happens so usually i grab a piece of leather let's see let's grab a piece of leather and what i'll do is just that i'll measure things out with this t-square over here and actually let me put this tool back in because it's kind of pricey to replace and when I measure things um, I'll use this and I would either use this rotary cutter or use the, this knife and speaking of which I should probably put it back 
use this knife. These are my two tools that I use to cut. If it's something that I make for myself off of a template, I might use scissors, but I literally just got these last week. So they're relatively new. And then after I measure it, I cut it. Let's say that this is the piece that I cut. I don't want to stitch around this. What I would do is I will use this tool here and basically mark the edges so I get a consistent line. And after that, I will take it to this piece of very messed up leather. Basically what I do um, is because I want to protect the tools. So I have, let me show you this other one. I glued a bunch of scrap leathers together to use as my punching pad. And so I'll bring the leather over to the punching pad and I would use one of these guys um, and this very messed up mallet um, to punch the holes. And I have been experimenting with different chisels and so right now I have like four different kinds of chisels. I, or actually if you count the ones that I broke, then I have five sets of chisels. They all give slightly different looks. And yeah, so overall, this is what it looks like. This little hammer here I use for setting hardware because it's heavier than this mallet. And like, I, I need something like this if I want to set the hardware correctly. Um, sometimes I punch on this thing. You can see that there are a lot of punching holes. It's a cutting board from Ikea. And um, I have just some random folios lying around. And before I stitch things, I tape them together with double-sided tapes. And all of these that you see are from me trimming, trimming the edges from the back of the double-sided tape. And these little guys are um, from me rounding the corners. So I know that some people use a corner punch. I don't actually punch the corners, I cut them. Um, so I have a tool like this that gives me different radius. And what I do is usually my covers that I make have that like six millimeter radius. I use this one and I basically just line it up with a corner and cut around. And that's why I usually end up with a bunch of these little, little bits and pieces. I have a lighter here to burn the threads, but I actually don't use this lighter all that much. And I'll show you why. A little bit later and over here I have a bunch of smaller scrap pieces they're actually they're bigger scrap pieces because the actual small ones are down here in a again Ikea bin um, like I said I'm a really messy person and once the leather gets harder to wrap and store like rolled up I just dumped them there over here I have a box of the superior labor scrap leathers they're actually pretty large pieces that I got um, last year or so and this is my trash can of all the way too small pieces that I cut off that I don't use anymore um, so my things are kind of all over the place. I have that pan there for um, when I was experimenting with different ways of dyeing leather and that didn't work out. So it's still just sitting there, but because I've had leather dye in there, I don't feel comfortable cooking that. And over here we have, so like I said, this is my basement and it's not finished. So what I did is I have these insulated curtains to block off this little area and I have a space heater because I live in Minnesota and it gets really, really cold 
down in the basement and if you look at the walls they are not insulated so in the winter this is like the freezing version of hell for me to be in and that's why i need the space heater i have another one on the other side of yeah this area here i have some chic sparrow scrap pieces and this that's li lying around here is some lining leather there are pig skin and i have more rolled up leathers here um i actually just recently got this utility shelf because before that they were standing and after a little while they just start piling on top of each other and it's really hard to get to what i need so these are the some of the larger sides that i have over here in this drawer i have some of the smaller pieces of more expensive leathers like this epi leather part this piece i got from a shop exchange probably over like half a year ago i still haven't used it sorry samantha i'll figure out <laughs> a way to use them but essentially these are the leathers that i only buy small cuts of because they're so expensive and look okay. This one, I think it's a vaquetta and some um, some Italian leathers and more epi leather. So basically, this is where I store the more expensive leathers. And this is my stamping machine for stamping my logo. Um, I got this for Christmas as a present. I'm really happy with the... And then, like you can see, I'm pretty sure that this is not how other people's workshop looks, but I just have random hardware and everything that um, I got from Tandy, like, <laughs> literally everywhere. Um, so, yeah, there's that. And oh, let me show you. This is a new lining leather that I bought um, the other day. It's a pig skin, but it's like the, the top layer of the pig skin instead of like that suede split thing and it's so thin and sturdy i can't wait to use it for lining for like pockets and stuff once i get to making those more complicated things and um so this is the other space heater like i said it's very messy on the other side i just have a bunch of stuff that like fall off <laughs> when I push things around up here and as you can see that it's starting to happen um, they just fall off on the floor I'm sorry this is so messy but it's just kind of how it is on a day-to-day -day basis and over here we have our 3d printer and um, those little IKEA sofa bed thing um, I have a bunch of <laughs> elastics and supplies for the 3D printer <laughs> on this little cart here. I was intending on using it for more, you know, some more organized, I mean like any kind of organization, but right now it's just holding some rings, um, that I have lying around. <laughs> um, and this is like an overview. <laughs> of what this looks like i mean i'm looking at it through my um, phone screen and it's chaotic i'm sorry about this but so this is what it usually looks like and what i would do after i do my punching so i'll find the line that i scratched with my tool earlier i'll punch around um the edges and what i'll do is i'll take Whatever I've put together and punch ready to be stitched upstairs and I'll show you where I take them upstairs. The actual parts of my house and because it's really cold downstairs and I don't really, I don't need to stay down there. It's actually harder to stitch down there. I take my stuff upstairs. I have a little basket with some elastics. Upstairs, I have, oh god, 
Um, <laughs> okay. I have my edge finish. This is my absolute favorite. Actually, I'll get to the edge finish a little bit later, but what I do is I'll pick a thread from over here and I'll take the thread over to my desk. Um, this is the planner I'm currently using is a vendor spec, but what I'll do is I will use this stitching pony and clamp the leather down um, in the center. And then what I'll do is I'll basically sit and put one leg on this part and stitch so that I can actually have both of my hands free for it. And I have some threads just lying around for no apparent reason, so that's good. And this is where I keep my needles. I have an Ollie clip here with needles um, just stuck to it because this is where I do all of my stitching. Um, this is quick and easy access and I don't lose them like I had been in the past. And as I go through my stitching, um, after I'm done, over here I have more elastics spare elastics that are already cut up sometimes i add these like barb things to the center closure i only do that for myself because i know exactly how tight i need the elastics to be but for orders i'm a little iffy about it because if you don't need it super tight or if you need it looser you can retie the elastics so that's really mostly just for me but this is where I store my um the the brown elastics that I use the most so I do my stitching here um it's it's quite fun and I get to watch something while I'm do the stitching which is nice and let me show you sorry I'm gonna cover this up again and let me show you. After I'm done, I'll go back down to the basement again to trim the edges and sand the edges to be just more um, level or more consistent. And then I'll come over here for leathers that wouldn't make too much sense for me to burnish. Um, or if I just can't burnish it, I'll put a coat of this clear edge paint on to seal the edges. Um, if I'm burnishing the leather, I would use the Tokonole Cream. It's my absolute favorite. I'm like halfway done with this bottle and I haven't had it for that long. I absolutely love this stuff. Before that, I was using the gum trag, but it doesn't do nearly as well as I like think it would. I have some different edge paints here for those like few leathers that really need the edge paint. And also just last week I got this Tokonole, but it has um, a brown color in it. This one just burns burnishes clear and this one burnishes to a brown color. And I was thinking that for the leathers that are not dyed fully through in the brown shade, I can probably start using this one. And the way I burnish my leather, so I'll show you, I have this baby. And let me cover up the camera again because my house is a mess. And <clears throat> I bring it here. I usually have an awl or something that I'll use to get the product out of this. And I burnish with a piece of cotton. And what I'll do is I just fold it up, put my finger here and just rub. <laughs> um, the key to burnishing is that you want heat. So you wanna go fast, but you don't wanna go heavy. It's not burnished by pressure, it's burnished by heat. So I, 
personally found that the cloth, the like the cotton canvas gives me the best control on the burnishing. So this is what I've been using. Uh, it's really like a lifesaver in my opinion. Over here, I also have a rivet remover, like a small metal cutter. A lot of the times when I set my rivets, they don't go in um, as straight as I want it to. So I have to remove them or if I'm doing some kind of customization for people and they need like the rivets removed, say from their Shakespeare pen loops, I'll use this tool as well. And that's pretty much about that's pretty much about the whole process here. And I'm gonna show you where I store the rest of my stuff. My li living room. Um, this is where I have my shelf behind the couch of all the board games that we play. But also on the shelf are all of these guys, and they're really heavy to try and grab by one hand. Ooh, hold on a sec. Okay. I have lift them up. So here is where all of my different types of dyes, um, some of the paint, some of the like antiquing material I have here. So um, sometimes I would dye my own leather especially more recently I've been doing more leather tooling and so basically what I have here are a bunch of water-based dye from Tandy and pretty much <laughs> most of the colors they offer in the Phoebe's, uh Pro dye these are oil-based dye and I've been personally using them more because they leave the leather softer after I dye them and I have some oil-based dye from the Tandy brand as well. Um, let me find some of the finishes. And I have different finish for after I finish dyeing. And basically this is just where I store them. And underneath, underneath here I have, oh this is the deglazer that I bought specifically for one person that needed me to re-dye their chic sparrow. And I personally found that the dye doesn't stick as well unless I um, use the deglazer on the current finish that was on the chic sparrow before. And so I bought this. <laughs> I don't know when I'll ever use it again, but I have it now. And here are some antiquing pastes from Phoebe's. Um, basically, I have a whole bunch of these. And the reason why they are weirdly in the living room is because I mostly, I know I shouldn't, but I mostly do the dyeing and everything on my kitchen counter. I don't have a better place to do them. And so I'll just lay down some, some um, newspaper and do the dyeing there. Um, my partner has been very annoyed by it, but he also understands that there is no better place for me to do them, really. And so that's why they're in the living room, because it's right next to the kitchen. And, and that's, that's my cat, that's Pancake. Um, here I have some coasters with my shop stamp. I have my shop, um notebook that I use to keep track of orders. I have my one of my two cats, Pancake. And yeah, so it's just really with the rest of the stuff that we own. And um, I think that's all I wanted to show you. It's pretty much everything that goes into my process. And I, I mean, I hope that you learned something about the bit behind the scenes of what goes into a business like this. Um, really the purpose of me making this video is to show you that that hand-stitched small business are just so fundamentally different from 
one that has employees working on things that you know have an actual office space everything that we do are really personal in a way but because everything literally everything is done by hand um, there's more room obviously for inconsistency and that's one drawback of ordering hand stitched smart maker item but on the other hand everything is made from start to finish by one person so it's more um I guess it's a, a just completely different reason at least for me when I want to order a completely handmade and hand stitched item versus when I buy like a Vanderspeck, a Gilio, a Louis Vuitton um there's a more of a layer of connection there in my mind and the reason why I really want to do this before I start reviewing any of the hand stitch items is because I know that there is going to be inconsistencies in the product. I know that there are going to be obviously negative things about each of the products that the makers make just like for every single maker. I don't think there's a planner maker that's absolutely perfect with absolutely no flaw and only uses the absolute best quality items. And so because of the scale of those makers, I don't want to come off as attacking or criticizing any individual and a lot of the, the drawbacks are really hard if not impossible to avoid because of the whole smaller um, at home operation hand stitch business model. So I wanted to have this video up and I will be referring to it whenever appropriate in the future. When I do talk about them, it's not that I think that their qualities are not good or anything like that. It's just, just that there are certain things with small at home hand stitched leather makers that they can't avoid some of the drawbacks. And I will talk more about it as I start reviewing more. And so I hope you've learned a thing or two um, from this. There are some really cool behind the scenes videos and everything from bigger makers like Gilio and Moterm. But um, I thought that showing you from start to finish what my workspace personally looks like. Granted, it was not a great uh, representation of all workspaces. <laughs> Um, it's gonna be fun, right? Um, so I hope you enjoy the video and I will see you in the future in my next review video that I'll post next week. And if you liked it and if you want to see more of my brutally honest review or other more chatty videos and whatnot, uh, please consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.